You're listening to the Silver Lined Relaunch, and I'm your host, Hilary DeCesar, award-winning entrepreneur and transitional coach. Each week, I'll invite you to tune into inspirational stories, revealing how you too can turn ordinary experiences into the extraordinary. Feeling stuck? I'll share step-by-step strategies to fuel your ability to experience a life where silver linings are both abundant and possible. All right, everyone, so excited to be here today and to bring you one of my dear friends who we have worked together in what we call the mastermind group. And Laurel Rutledge is here to really inspire, but also to share some pretty significant relaunches with you. So Laurel, welcome. Yay. Thank you, Hillary. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me on. Well, you know, this has been so much fun to watch your progress. Um, We have so many similarities in our backgrounds, and we're going to hear a lot about those. But I would love to have you start by sharing your story, sharing how you've gotten to where you are and the relaunches that have been so impactful for you along the way. Sure. So, you know, it is what you say and what you tell people about this relaunching is so critical. And for me, it was, uh, there was a big impetus for me to, to finally make the leap to entrepreneurship. And so, you know, if we are still, we actually get signs along the way, but as women, um, in particular as women of color, we don't always pay attention to those. The first thing we think is it must be me. I must be crazy. This can't be what I'm supposed to do. Maybe if I just dig deeper, then it'll be okay. And I realized after uh, nearly 30 years in corporate America, I just finally had that moment that I said, why am I continuing to fight so hard for people who don't want to really do anything different? Why am I continuing to give all of me to people who really don't want it and don't appreciate it when I could really be serving bigger? And so I just decided, one, to put me first because I wasn't crazy. I was tired. I was exhausted. I wasn't able to spend time with my family the way I wanted to. I wasn't present for my friends. And I was fighting battles that absolutely didn't make sense. They just didn't make sense. And so I said, it's just time. It's time. And it took me a long time to get there. So I want people to think it's like an overnight. It took me a long time to get there. I think you said it took 30 years, right? (laughs) 30 years for me to realize uh, this may not be where it's supposed to be. And yet, if I had not done those 30 years, if I had not gone through those battles, if I did not have the scars that I have, if I had not had the experiences that I have, I would not have been prepared for this moment. And so a relaunch in my mind, and you and I have talked about this, we often think relaunch is just starting over completely from scratch, but you don't leave your experiences behind. Your experiences are the things that you stand on for the relaunch. It's like the mountaintop from which you're reaching the clouds. So Mm. I just... It was just time. It was really time that I just said, you know, this doesn't feel good. It's not me. I'm really not crazy. Um, It's not a fit anymore. And there are options. There are choices. And corporate America will make you think you don't have a choice. And you always have a choice. I want to ask you about that because you and I, when we both got into corporate and uh, you you were there longer than I was there, Mm -hmm. when I left, it was almost 10 years and- Mm -hmm. I felt like it was the only option when I first started in business, right? Entrepreneurship, that was who had even heard of that. And the people that were, you know, out there, you know, trailing, you know, trailblazers, Mm -hmm. they were doing these very one-off types of, you know, things. I'm like, oh, and even when you talk to people that you were thinking about potentially starting something, doing something different, leaving the corporate world. People mm-hmm. were kind of like, what are you crazy? Like, why would you yes. do that? <laughs> right. And I, I want to go back because I know you and I have had, you know, multiple conversations yeah. around this. Yeah. We both grew up in the time where it was definitely a man's world, yes. no doubt. And yes. we were both women. You yes. also had the fact that, as you said, you know, you're you're a black woman as mm-hmm. well. And yeah. I know that we, you were in the HR world and I was in manufacturing, yeah. which, you know, we're talking like yeah. the good old, the good old boys club yeah. right? and yeah. venture capitalists, which were also the good old boys club. But yeah. tell me, tell me at that time, 
how were you able to spend as much time in yeah. corporate as you did? And you yeah. know, now you're like, hey, yeah. relaunch. That was silver lining is that, you know, <laughs> we got through yeah. it. But, yeah. but share with me more about those experiences. Sure. So, you know, it is, you're right. We we both are of that age where you came up and that's just what you did. And it was, it we were trained to, you get up, you go to college, you get a job and you work for somebody. And not necessarily, we were just past the generation that you work there until you get a pension, but you at least go and you work for someone else. It wasn't necessarily ingrained in us to go out and, and do the thing that you want to do on your own. And and yet, you know, when I look back, I think, well, I had some folks in my family who were actually entrepreneurs. It just never dawned on me to do that. And when I look back at the, the time that I was in corporate, you know, it was, especially for those people of color and in particular in the black community, we grow up with that story. So with everything that has happened, we, we I know many people have heard about the story that um, black parents tell, especially their black sons you know, how you need to be careful. If you get stopped, what do you need to do? Well, there's another story that's told to all of us. You got to work harder. You got to be better. You got to think different. You got, you got to, you got to, you got to. And even when you do all of that, the playing field is still not level. So don't expect to get what you really deserve. You just, you just got to keep working because ultimately if you keep working and you keep pushing, somebody's going to recognize it and you will get rewarded and you'll, you know, get the promotions and all that kind of stuff. So you're kind of trained to just go hard. And if it doesn't work, just go harder. You're not necessarily trained to step back and say, mm, I'm going to go harder, but it doesn't matter. And at some point there needs to be a decision of, I need to leave or I need to decide to do something completely different because it's never going to work here. And so what you see, at least for me, was all along the way, something just didn't feel right. Like I would, one, I'm a lifelong learner. If I'm not learning, I'm really bored. And so I would start, I started out in accounting. And I did accounting because I had to, right? I wanted to do psychology in undergrad. My dad was like, sweet pea, I love you so much, but you got to get a job when you get out. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. So I did accounting <laughs> and, you know, That's and, so and oil and gas. Yeah. I'm like, you know, okay. Um, oil and gas in Texas in the early nineties. And so they hired five of us new five months later, they laid us off. Right. So first job, first layoff. So you get that initial shock to your system of, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? What do you mean you're laying me off? And so, and, but even that situation was, well, we're laying you off in October, but would y'all please stay until March? Cause you know, we got to get through year end clothes. So wait, yeah, <laughs> we're taking my job. But you me, baby. Me. <laughs> so I, you know, so it didn't, it took a while to, to think about that. And, and that was the starting point for me. I think of understanding the disconnect between how you show up and what you believe and what you're really trying to do versus the agenda of other people you're working for. Cause I had a boss mm -hmm. in the very beginning, my very first job, I was concerned about something. I didn't, wasn't sure how to do it. I went to him. I said, Hey, can you explain it to me? There was a transition. Cause my real boss was, was retiring. And this guy in the middle of the hall yelled at me. I don't know why you're coming to me with this. If you don't have, if you don't have time to do it and your boss didn't have time to do it, what makes you think I have time for you today? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was devastated, right? I was devastated. And I remember going back to my office again, oil and gas. We all had offices, right? Went back to my office, closed the door, picked up the phone, called my dad, bawling. Oh my God, he yelled at me, blah, 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 blah. And, and then we got disconnected. And I was like, oh, that's weird. And I called my dad back and I'm like, hey, daddy, I think we got disconnected. He said, no, we didn't. He said, I need you to suck it up. Stop being a stereotypical woman. Don't you ever let him see you cry. Never. You go Ooh. find a way, get yourself together and figure it out, right? So these are the kind of stories we had. So as I went along- That was your, that was was, your tough love from your dad. That was my tough dad, love. He was giving you, but you said something that you know ties into that. It's that- did you find when you said, you know, the black sons were told, you know, certain yes. things and then the black daughters yeah. were told certain things yeah. and it was always about you got to, got to, got to, got to, got to, you know, yeah. you got to get out there and eventually have a job. And this is what's the most yes. important and keep your head down. But mm -hmm. for you, and you know, I, I, I can so appreciate this because I remember the yeah. day that we were as women allowed yeah. to wear pants in the yes. office and yes. not just skirts. Right. And I remember the day and it was just like, this just seems so oh, archaic right. to me, but I'm like, okay, we're celebrating, right? right. But, but I need to understand. So, you know, whether you are in, you know, as you said, oil and gas, whether I yeah. was in manufacturing, mm -hmm. 
you know, women haven't been in those areas at the time yeah. that we started to go in right. there. And that was tough for us. I mean, yeah. that is like, Very. you know, that one diamond in the rough, there's like, yeah. and people were a little bit apprehensive to help us. Yes. Very and, much. you know, help me understand how that was for you. Like yeah. this guy in the, in the hall and then he raises his voice and yeah. you're just like, you know, was that really necessary? Was it? Yeah. yeah. It was insane. It was insane. And, and, and I, like you have spent so much of my time in manufacturing or production. Right. And I love it. I mean, that book, the goal, which is like 400 years old now, I just love it. That whole idea of, of, you know, bottlenecks and things moving. And when I went to my next job, which was in high tech, but it was manufacturing. Um, I remember getting there and it was, I had moved back home. Right. And I, I got this job and I'm working in this plant and the people are so cool, but there's kind of a divide between, then it wasn't necessarily race or gender. It was those with degrees and those without degrees. You know, there's always something that divides people. And, and I remember walking in and I was also brought up. If you don't know, you don't know who you're going to be able to get information from. So you just treat everybody like they're with respect because it may be somebody that you never know of who has the information you need. And so when I got to that environment, it was so nurturing. Inez, I'll never forget Inez Eden. She came up to me and she said, okay, this is the person you need to call. She'd been there forever. This is the person you need to call because this is what we need to do on a weekly basis or a monthly basis. And I called the person and I said, hey, you know, here's who I am. I'm new. I understand we have to do this monthly. Can you just let me know what you need from us, when you need it, what, you know, all of this kind of thing. And she was on the phone for me with like an hour. I had all these, these notes. And when I got off the phone, um, I went to Inez and I said, okay, so here's what I understand. She just started smiling. And I was like, what? She said, she never talks to anybody. This is a woman in Dallas. She's like, she never talks to anybody. I was like, what do you mean? She said, you were able to get information from her that nobody can get from her. She said, what did you do? I said, well, I just asked the question. She said, no, what you did was you called her understanding that you didn't know and that she had information that you needed and you treated her with respect because you understood that she was going to need something from you. And in order for you to give that to her, you needed something from her. And so what that brought to me was, you know what, I'm sitting here, it's manufacturing, folks are a little nuts, but if you just treat people with dignity and respect, for the most part, you're going to be able to serve them and they will be able to give you what you need. And there was another guy that was the same way. You'd walk down the hall, you'd see him, he wouldn't speak. You'd say hello, he wouldn't speak. And I got to the point where I would actually walk to the point where I was in his face, in his path, and I would speak. He became, again, one of the people that I talked to most, the one who really got me into understanding manufacturing and logistics and how things moved. And because I had that foundation, then when I started moving to other places and working with other bosses, because that was the same company that also had a boss that threw a book at me in a meeting, by the way, oh, um, and told me that he didn't understand how to do something because he didn't, I didn't train him well at the training that he didn't attend. That's why I say, you guys always have choices and you can't let someone else's drama become an, an internal narrative for you. So a friend of mine says, you can't let the external narrative become your internal narrative. Mm -hmm. And so, it's so good. I, you know, I didn't so even good. know that, I didn't even know that story. And yeah. <laughs> I too have actually two women that I ended up finding in that when yeah. I was, and I was high tech manufacturing and financial mm -hmm. selling those. And I had two, Veronica O'Shea and Jara mm -hmm. Shields. And they were yep. there for me. And then I too had that one man <laughs> who was seeing yes. me, you know, flounder. I was like the fish out of water, like, help yes. me, help me. He finally yeah. said, listen, we're not going to do this during office hours. You're right. going to, you're going to stay in the evenings. I'm going to put you into this yes. room and on a whiteboard, I'm going to explain to you everything yes. you will need to know about manufacturing. <laughs> yes, exactly. And, and you know what? It was exactly what you said yeah. initially, you know, I was the, you know, the, the, the yep. Dumbalaya, you know, the one that has no clue. He saw exactly. me didn't say anything to me. And then finally the one, and I was always very nice and yes. you know, kind of saying, is there anything more I should be doing? And right. it was almost, there was too much. And so I can appreciate that, yeah. that you never know yeah. who you is going know. to be that, you know, you that, that light, that North star for you to help you yes. get through it. That's just so, so brilliant. You also exactly. mentioned, and um, I want to, I want to talk about this, that yeah. There's always something that divides us, right? Yes. And and yes. can I tell you something? These days, there Ugh. 
we could we could put the list and the list would be yeah. you know a mile long right right it would be right. you know the the santa's you know who's been good who's been bad list yeah. and there's just, just there's right. so many different lists of right. you know dividing factors mm -hmm. and at some point though you came to terms with i'm not going to allow yeah. that i am a woman right I am right. not going to allow that I am a black woman. I'm not going to allow right. that I am in an organization that, you know, I'm not getting the respect. I'm not going to allow. Right. And you took it upon yourself yeah. to say, that's them. This is me. Yes. yes. Can you share more about that? Because that, sure. that's the grit. Yeah. That's what, you know, that's my yeah. friend, Laurel. That's what I admire yeah. so much about you. Thank you. Yeah. It, you know, it's, it doesn't happen overnight, right? Because again, especially if you're one of those type A insecure overachievers, right? Let's all just admit, yeah, hey, type A insecure maybe, overachiever. Maybe we're both sitting here just on this call. It, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, you, you, you know. guys could see us, you know, maybe we're raising our hand. Maybe yeah, we're just, up. you know. So, it, you know, when you're, when you're like that, the first thing you do when something goes wrong is you start with self-examination, right? And so if you're already self-aware, the first thing you do is say, what did I do? How did I say it? What was wrong? And you start there. And so what happens is, Corporate can feed that. They can feed that it's you. Um, there's a lot of ego. You know, I was in professional services for a while. And, and the beauty about professional services is you get to see a lot of things and see a diff lot of different clients and a lot of different situations. The challenge around professional services, especially when you're selling a service and not a product, is you have to be really, really confident really confident because when people say no, they're essentially saying no, that you don't know enough to be able to, to help them. And that takes a lot of confidence to be able to get rejected that way. The problem is in professional services, people start to, to you know, breathe their own exhaust, right? And believe their own hype. Mm -hmm. And so you get into these organizations that are very old, very staunch and stalwart, who ha that have been very successful for a long time, but have not realized that their success at this point is really about inertia. It's not about innovation. It's not about differences. And so they say the right words. We want people with different ideas. We want people who look different than us. We want to find different ways to do something. And yet, when you come with something different, the first thing they say is, oh, that's not the way we did it. Oh, that's, that's not, not the work. way we, we do it that around again. here. Nah, that's not going to work, right? And so, and initially you, you take that on because especially as women and especially as women of color, you learn to code switch, right? I just talked about this on my podcast this week, which is sometimes you can't, you got to think about not only the message you're trying to deliver, but to whom you're delivering it. Because if they aren't going to get it, then you got to figure out a different way to deliver it. And the challenge with women and the challenge with women of color is we have to so much come out of who we are sometimes just to get the message delivered because otherwise people aren't going to hear it because they're, when you walk in the room, they see a woman. When I walk in the room, they see a black person first and then they see a woman. And so there's already in that first seven seconds, some kind of, you know, perspective is formed. Mm -hmm. And as my friend, Dina Clark, who's a, an expert in DNI says, you never know what race someone has run before they cross the door. And so many corporate organizations, especially if you move, if you don't just stay in some place for a very, very long time, if you move to a different organization and you're bringing experiences, they hire you because you have the experiences, but inclusion is about utilizing all that experience that you're bringing to the table. And they don't always have the courage or the knowledge or the know-how to really take advantage of all this great talent that they brought in. So I found over time that again, starting very early, this doesn't feel right, something's not right. I kept pushing, kept pushing. If it didn't feel right, really bad, I would look for something else. And every time I felt like it's time to move, an opportunity came up and I just said, yes. Even if I didn't know how to do it, I just said yes. And eventually- But you always said, but, but what you said is you don't leave your experience behind though. You don't, you don't, you are your experiences. And just because they haven't seen it before or done it before, especially those of you who are in very, very old organizations, organizations that have been around 80 years, 150 years, 200 years, there is a culture of this is the way we've always done it. And for people who worked on my team, the thing that would rile me up is if you said, uh, not my job, that was a problem. Or if you said, uh, we've never done it that way. We've always done it this way. Those were the two things that really set me off because that's a stymie to innovation. And it also is an indication of a lack of willingness to accept and include and appreciate different ideas, different perspectives. 
And so, uh, okay, there is a there's a massive <laughs> right now. There, oh, oh, I got like ten <laughs> things going through my brain right now. Right, okay, but, but what I heard you say yeah. just brought up something that. We as women who have, you know, come from whether it was corporate or a different career and we're trying to get into entrepreneurship or we're in it, we sometimes forget about all of that past experience that is who we are and why we can even become an entrepreneur. And as we're sharing our story, we look at Mm -hmm. it like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what steps I should be taking. How should I be launching a company? How should I be coming? You know, what, what, who is a successful entrepreneur? And that is so critical because people are like, well, you know, I haven't succeeded in this, but you've succeeded right. in so many other yes. things. And as women, I feel like we compartmentalize, like I was good over there, but I'm mm-hmm. not good right here because I haven't done it. I haven't been successful. And as you said, you know, you got the the degrees, the certification, blah, yeah. blah, blah. We got all these different things. Yeah. And yet we yeah. still feel like we're not worthy of where we are. Yes. We're not ready. We're not ready. ready. And as you said, both of us grew up in manufacturing, right? And so what you would find is you would either have women who were shrinking, right? They were not speaking up. They were, they weren't applying for positions because they look at the job description. It's like, well, of these 10 things, I've only done two. So I probably shouldn't even apply. Whereas I'm telling you that guy may have done one or none and he's going to apply. So women apply. It's about transferable skills. And then you had the other that was like, well, you know, I got to show that I can take it. So I'm going to be as brash, I'm going to be as harsh, I'm going to be as nasty as the guys I'm working with. So you find these two like ends of the spectrum. And here's the reality. You need to be able to be somewhere where you can show up as you, where you can show up authentically as you every day. Now, that doesn't mean there's some stuff that you just leave at home, right? Because it's still a, it's still a job. It's not, you know, the backyard barbecue. So there are some things that are around decorum and professionalism. But all of that makes up who you are. And when you have your own business and you decide to go out and do that, it is very easy to say, oh, but I haven't done it. And I did that. I'm like, look, I know brick and mortar. I know how to do all that stuff. But you give me online and I am completely lost. And at first I was thinking, I just, I, what am I going to do? How am I going to do this? And I finally came up and said, no, 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 you're going to treat this the same way you treated it before. You go to the people that are experts and say, I need you to talk to me like I know nothing. Yes, I know corporate language and I know all this. I need you to start from like ground zero that I know nothing. And then I can translate in my brain. Oh, okay. We're talking about funnels, but that's really our sales process. When I was over in brick and mortar, we're talking about, you know, nurturing emails. That's just how we reached out to customers with customer service, you know, so I can connect in my brain, how it all works. It's just that the language is different. And so don't, don't negate one, don't negate yourself period, because you have value. You have talent. We all have value. We all have talent just because somebody in a corporate job or even a small business tells you, you don't, doesn't mean you have to own that. That may be, it's just the wrong fit for you at the time, or that may just be their issue and not yours. So don't, don't own that narrative. Be honest with yourself. Are there skills and, and processes that you need to really learn? Are there attitudes you need to check? right? Is there language you need to learn? Are there ways you need to learn how to engage? Absolutely. Because none of us is perfect and we have to be able to adapt to our situation. And you did not start yesterday. Didn't you? You didn't follow up the turnip truck yesterday. (laughs) You did not. Mm -hmm. You have life experiences. Even if you don't have lots of corporate experience, you have life experience. You have other experiences that you bring to the table to help you launch into or relaunch something that you really are passionate about. And don't sell yourself short because we have a tendency to do that because Uh, other people have told us we're not worthy. Don't own someone else's narrative of you. That is so true. And I I laugh when you said that your dad said, you know, hey, don't do psychology. (laughs) Well, guess what? Guess what I graduated (laughs) with? Psychology. You know why? You know why? Because my dad was an orthopedic surgeon and I went Ah. pre-med in school. And all of a sudden I realized, It is not my jam. I am not fired up on this. This is not what I want to do. And so the only degree that I could still graduate in four years with was Mm -hmm. psychology. And so I come out and people are like psychology. But now, Laurel, I got to tell you, I use that psychology degree all the time. Absolutely. So I, I really think that, you know what? 
I owned my own narrative around yes. how I was going to say, well, from a psychology perspective, I remember my first interview, I was at Xerox and yeah. the whole thing was around spin selling. And I mm -hmm. thought, Hey, I must be the best salesperson in the world because my dad let me finish in a, you know, a, a different state yes. college and he had to pay for it. So I figured right. if I could get that one across the home, you know, the finish line, yeah. I must be good. So exactly. Anyway, okay. exactly. So I want to talk to you about you. You now are just, you're, you're crushing it. You, you have your own radio show. You. you are yeah. an entrepreneur now through and mm -hmm. through. But it's not easy no matter what, mm -hmm. right? It's not overnight right. success. Can you share right. with me your journey? Because I know there's a lot sure. of people that are in our groups now that are going from corporate or, you know, mm -hmm. trying to figure out their next thing and, and right. they don't know what to do or how to do it. Can you share how right. you were able to move forward in that? Sure. You know, I think one, there's got to be an impetus. You know, it's not just a, oh, I'm just going to start a business, right? I mean, people do that, but um, you at least want to have some idea of what you want to do. And the only reason I say that is because if you don't at least have an idea of what you want to do, you're going to be spinning for so long and wasting a lot of time and a lot of money and causing yourself unnecessary consternation. So you at least want to have some idea and some of that should play into things that make your soul sing, right? What really makes you happy and where can you serve? Because entrepreneurship, more so than anything, is about service, right? You're serving a customer, you're serving them with a product, you're serving them with a service. It is really about getting really close to those people that you are trying to do something for. And so what I realized when I came out, I thought, okay, I'm done at the end of 2017. I'll have this business up and running March of 2018. No problem. We're on the, we're on the road. You know? <laughs> so no. No. And, and, and it wasn't because I wasn't excited. I wasn't working. It wasn't because of any of that. It is because number one, it was 2018. So there was all kinds of craziness going on. And two, it takes a minute, even if you know what you want to do, it really takes a minute to solidify what is the message? What is it that I'm bringing to people that is uniquely me, especially when you've not spent a lot of time tooting your own horn. And that I don't mean being arrogant. I mean, being very confident in what you do and what you do well. Because you have to stand in that position of, no, I am really good at what I do. And it took me a very long time to be able to say those words. I'm really good at what I do. And this is how I do it. And this is the value that I deliver. So you have to have to be able to find that. And it took me a while to yeah, really to get to that, that place. inner voice. Yes, the inner it takes voice, a while. Your inner story, your inner being able it to, does. as you said so brilliantly, go back and realize that. Just yeah. because you're doing something new, you have all that past experience. Yes, exactly, exactly. And being being willing to to learn again, being willing to really, um, if you're going to go out in entrepreneurship, especially if you are leaving a job and then starting as opposed to kind of keeping your day job, be ready because starting a business is one of the times as much as a few others that you are going to get really close with all that head trash you got going on. It is going to <laughs> come so up. Good. It is going to show out. It is going to keep you up. It is going to push you down. It is going to be in the way of you getting to where you want to be. And so be willing to do the work, not only on your business, but on you to make you the confident entrepreneur that you want to be and, and be willing to address the things that, are really kind of standing in the way. So for me, it was visibility. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't have any trouble getting in front, of, in front of groups. I have no problem doing big speeches. You know, the bigger the group, the better. No problem. I am a professional extrovert. So I prefer to be introverted. I prefer to have very small groups. I'm not one that's just going to be networking to network. And so that whole visibility thing, I didn't have a picture on my LinkedIn. I mean, it was, I wasn't on social media. The only thing I had was a Facebook page because my salsa dance I group love, wait, put everything I on Facebook. I love, wait, I've got to say, I, I love that you just said you're a professional extrovert. You had yes, to teach yourself. You had to teach yourself to get out there and what Absolutely. persona were you going to bring? And now you're like, hey, I yes. am out there. And if you could see her, if you're watching this, you know, in, on the video stream, <laughs> yeah. she's got this bright yellow, it pops. <laughs> this gal should be on stage Thank everywhere. You. So, but <laughs> as you said, 
That's not yeah. who you were internal, no. but you knew that you had to do that. And yes. you know, I, I, I teach this all the time about working on your business and working yes. on yourself and how it yes. depends. What, what matters is what's at the core. What's exactly. at the core for everything. And yes, you just hit that and you are yeah. absolutely 100% right on that. And you have to be able to show up, you know, as who you are. So when people get me, and this is when you talk about relaunching and, and Hillary and I just had this conversation, you know, I'm, so I'm three years in. So three years is usually the tipping point, right? For a business. So I'm, I've not been doing entrepreneurship for 10 years. This is, this is pretty new. And so as I go into this, this third year, you know, it, I'm redoing and relaunching like my website and my website is great. I love my website, the colors, the brands, all that kind of stuff but something wasn't feeling right, right? About my copy, about my my thing on LinkedIn. It just went, something wasn't, again, I was getting those little antenna twitching that I'd gotten throughout my whole career where something said, ah. Uh. And what I realized was this, yes, I'm showing up. Yes, I'm doing video. I'm doing my radio show. I'm doing the podcast and I love it. And when I show up, I show up as just me, as just me. And yet my website, when you looked at my website or when I read my website, did it really tell people one, what I did? So we had to fix that. But the other thing is when you looked at the about section or you looked at what you did, it was this very, it was very professional. It was very corporate that tried to be a little less, you know, a little more open and engaging. It didn't have my heart in it. It didn't have my heart in it. And so we're redoing that. And so I would say to you, if you're really starting a business, don't forget that you are part of that business. If you're a product and yes, you're selling a product, that's great, but you're the face of the business. For me, it's a service. So I am the brand. And so it really came to me in this third year. I'm like, you know what? No, this has got to be me. Sometimes I can be a little irreverent. Sometimes I talk too fast, right? <laughs> Sometimes I don't want to have anything to do with anybody. And I've got a lot of degrees. I got a lot of, you know, certifications and all that kind of stuff, but that absolutely doesn't matter. What matters is the detailed skills that I have that are an ability to connect dots that other people can't connect and to help you see who you are, where you are, what you want, and how to get there. And I needed the website to say that, right? So Ugh. it I this took is like all wonder, of that. This is, I've got, hold on, I've got wonder <laughs> twin powers going with you right, right? now. <laughs> we haven't even talked about this. I am in the process of redoing my website, relaunching yeah. my LinkedIn because it too, we yeah. evolve. We yes. evolve. And yes. you have to be willing to say, hmm, you know what? My identity is changing. Yes. I'm growing into this new role and I'm yeah. learning. And you know, you you said at the very beginning, you're a lifelong learner. I am yes. too. And what we want to do is make sure your brand is growing yes. up with you. Yes, exactly. God, that, so I didn't even exactly. realize this, Laurel, how on yeah. parallel paths we really are. I mean, I knew yeah. that we were, you know, Wonder Twins. I get that. Right. We're connected. Yeah, I, yes, I get all we that. Are. I didn't realize how closely aligned in terms of that. And yeah, as you're sitting here saying, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times people are like, oh, I got to do this again. No, right. We talk about in relaunch, it's rebranding. Absolutely. Rebranding Absolutely. Your, your external and your internal. Love that. Yes. Yes. Okay. It's important. So, so I'm going to ask one other area. Okay. And right now, as, as times are changing, as mm -hmm. the focus and entrepreneurship, what would you give as advice for people that are realizing that, hey, maybe their their old job is not as secure yeah. as it used to be. Yeah. What would you tell them about making this next move into entrepreneur space? Right. Well, the first thing I would say is get still. Get really still. Um, because it is not a snap judgment to leave a corporate job. It's not a snap judgment. Now, if you're in danger, if it's really toxic, you need to get out. There is such thing as trauma in corporate. But for the most part, it is not just a snap judgment. I would say get really still and understand what is it that's not feeling right? What is it that's not working? And is that me or is that here? Because you need to understand that because if thinking that going to start your own business is going to automatically clean everything up, that is a fallacy. And you will set yourself up 
for lots of disappointment, for having to work harder. Doesn't mean you're going to fail. It just means that trajectory is going to be much harder because you haven't set the groundwork to be really honest and really real about what you want. That's the first thing. So get still. The second thing is make a plan. You don't want to hurt you because you're mad at them. Make a plan. So Lisa Nichols always says, you know, use that job that you're doing now as your investor. So if you have a way that you can start, maybe you get your infrastructure done while you're still working. Maybe you start making your contacts and your connections or or manufacturing your thing while you're still working, while you still got a flow of income coming in. Make a plan. Proper prior planning prevents poor performance. Six Ps. That's another thing I came from my parents. Proper prior planning prevents poor performance. So make a plan. And then the third one I would say is grace. You got to give yourself grace. Because again, I will reiterate all the stuff, all the head trash, all the things you didn't even realize were sitting in your spirit are going to come up when you are out there making this happen on your own. Even if you have a village around you and you want to surround yourself with a village, even if you have a village around you in those quiet moments, all of that stuff, all of those tapes have been playing, get to come to the forefront. And so you're going to have to give yourself grace in order to listen to that stuff, understand it, and then put it in the right place. Because some of it's to protect you. Some of it's walls that you've put up because you wanted to protect. Some of it's just trash. And you need to be able to discern between the two because the stuff that put up to protect you, there may be something in there that's a lesson that's important as you move forward in your entrepreneurship journey. So get still, make a plan and give yourself grace. Those are the top three Mm, for me. I love that. And there is gold in those words. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Okay. So as much as I would love to continue yes. this conversation, yeah. we do have to wrap up. This is time for sure. rapid fire. Okay. okay. So I've got, I've got seven, possibly, you know, maybe another question, okay. here, but I want to <laughs> give you some, I want to give you these and just boom, answer them. Okay. okay? All okay. right. And I'm laughing at some of these because I'm like, I wonder what she's going to say. All right. right. Zoom calls dressed head to toe or waist up. Waist up. Mm, you're my girl. Uh, <laughs> and then don't often, forget to don't stand up. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I can't right now because you would definitely know. Right. My, I think my top looks cute, but nothing else. Right. Okay. Then how often do you wash your fabulous hair? Um, once a week. Okay. Yeah. And is it like a dry shampoo in between or no? No, it is. I mean, this is 4C really dry. You wash it for me. I wash it more often than that. And it is a fuzzy woolly mess. It just, oh, it needs God. kind of that, that moisturizer. Yeah. No, so, I like yeah. when you just let it go. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. All right. Favorite podcast besides ours and yours. Yes. <laughs> yes. Actually, I love, this is so hard. I love revisionist history with Malcolm Gladwell. I am like a fangirl with Malcolm Gladwell. So that's one. And then pod save the people. Okay. I love Malcolm as well. And I haven't even yes. thought about listening to his. So thank you. I will, oh, I will definitely yes. check that one Incredible. out. Um, I love this beauty product and the name. Okay. I actually have two. One is Green Clean by Pharmacy, Pharmacy with an F. That yeah. is a makeup remover. It's like a balm. It is the bomb. I've never used anything that takes everything off. And then second is my minted, M-E-N-T-E-D, black owned, black woman owned, black design, uh, lipstick and lip liner. And they have a full makeup line. Okay. But for us, you know, white girls over here, we could still oh, use no. minted. Yes. They are perfect Ooh, nudes. Perfect Ooh. nudes. Yes. Oh, minted, see, M-E-N-T-E-D. Nudes, nudes are my jam. So yeah. Awesome. Okay. Backyard barbecue or swanky cocktail party? Backyard barbecue. Okay. And I got to yes. throw this in. Favorite thing that you're going to barbecue? So I like, and I always forget the name of it. I think it's Pompano. It's this fish that they put on the grill. It's like a big, like wide fish. It's not like trout and it's fantabulous. That's what I and love. Do you use the, do you use the container that makes it not fall apart or are you good enough that it's big enough that it's not going to fall into the, the grills? No, no, no. See, backyard barbecue doesn't mean Laurel's barbecuing. That's <laughs> backyard barbecue. I attend. <laughs> you know? Okay. I like that. That sounds perfect. Cause I'm sitting here. I'm thinking about the fish that I barbecued and how they've all like yes. fallen into the barbecue. I'm like, Oh, that's really mm-hmm. terrible. Yeah. No, okay. I direct traffic. Yes. Okay. I love that. And then go to poolside drink. 
you know, I've, I'm a champagne girl, wherever, mm-hmm. whenever, whatever, any bubbles. bubbles. Okay. So I hope when you're celebrating your wins, it involves some form of champagne. Absolutely. Love Clico yeah. girl. Yes. Ooh, <laughs> Absolutely. Me too. And, and by yeah. the way, on a different, a different time, I'm going to tell you my, my story around that one as well. Yes. Okay. Perfect. And then lastly, what does powerhouse of possibility mean to you? Wow. That's a big one for me. Powerhouse of possibility truly means standing in the fact that all things are possible. And even if you take that word, I know all of you guys have seen that the word impossible, you can repurpose it. And it says, I'm possible. It is about standing in your genius, in your possibility, owning your power, standing in your power, knowing that everything you want is possible. That's what it means Mm. for me. I love that. That is so brilliant, especially for today's time. Because people are saying Thank you. it's impossible. And yes, yeah. I'm impossible. Yeah. All right. So we're wrapping up here, but I want to yeah. make sure that my listeners know how to reach you. What are you working on? Sure. And you know, where can they connect? Absolutely. So um, one, I would love people to check out the podcast as well. This podcasting thing, we love doing this, don't we, Hillary? This is just we awesome do. to reach people. Yeah. Um, and so you can find me on all the platforms. That's the Rutledge Perspective Podcast. So you can find that on all, all platforms. Um, the best way to reach me is welcome at laurelrutledge.com. Um, my website is, everything is laurelrutledge.com. So you can see me there um, and you can just send me an email at welcome at Laurel Rutledge. And I actually have given Hillary, I'd love to, to talk to some of you guys if you if you feel the need. And I've given her a link that, you know, you can guys can get to me just for listeners of the relaunch. So, and so, I, um, and so and one thing we yes. do, are going to do, we're going to put all of this. If you listen yeah. to the very end of this podcast today, you'll hear that there is something called the treasure chest. You can text yeah. it. You're going to get a link. We're going to give you links to everything, the Rutledge awesome. perspective. You're going to understand how to get there. If you are interested, which I highly suggest you do yeah. definitely set yourself up with this consultation that she's offering as yeah. well. I happen to know, a little birdie told me that you are about yeah. to get to a very big milestone and I would yes. love our audience to help you get there. I know by the end of the so year, much. you're looking at, you know, yes. going to that highest level of your podcast so far. Yes. So I would encourage everyone, please go, you know, help yes. a sister out. Let's, you know, go over Thank support. Yeah. So we'll also, and, and would that be just the Rutledge perspective and it would be on all of the different platforms yep. for your podcast? The Rutledge perspective podcast. Yes. Okay. On all the platforms. And so, okay. and please uh, guys, if you're listening, Hillary, you've got to make sure you are following Hillary. This idea of relaunching, this idea of stepping into your power and owning who you are and knowing that it's never over. It's never over till it's over. And understanding that a relaunch is a setup for new success. So mm-hmm. I yes, I she's been that. great and she's given me all these kudos, but I'm telling you, Hillary's the girl. You got to go see her. You got to go talk to her. Wow. Got to go follow you, her. You, hey, again, Wonder Twin Powers activate right, right. here. <laughs> All right, exactly. Laura, thank you for being on the show. And I do look forward to having you on again to yes. continue these conversations. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for tuning in today. If you felt a connection to this episode of the Silver Lined Relaunch, please head over to iTunes now. It would mean so much to me if you would leave a good review and help others find silver linings as well. And don't forget, you can have immediate access to all of the bonuses and notes from the show today in our treasure chest, which you have access to for free by texting 55444 and typing in treasure chest or You could go to our private Facebook group, The Relaunch Effect, Living a Life You Love. Together, we've hit the reset button for you, turning your transitions into a transformation. Until next time, don't forget, there's always a silver lining.